Okay, this is a level three video for the second practice run of the light intensity versus distance data. Basically, we gave you this data table um, and your goal was to finish it off. First, what we're gonna do is replicate this data table and make a graph that's just for achieved. So, here we go. Here's the data table and if you had just put in all this information, you probably want to work out your average light intensity. We'll just call it I. That's equals average bracket. Drag across the three numbers. There you go. Then you drag this little thing here, pull it down. So there we have our average. Now, we don't want to graph these numbers and these numbers. What we want to graph is the intensity and the 1 over distance squared because that's how it looks in the formula. There's a lot of reasons for that but we're just gonna go quickly so what we need here is 1 over distance squared in the column to the left of this okay the left column will always be the horizontal the right column will always be the vertical axis unless you learn how to change it. So here we go. This is going to be 1 over d squared. So all we need to do is equals 1 divided by click on that d and square it. And there it goes. Then drag it down. Now, these are the two numbers we want to graph. Okay? So we insert, graph, scatter. There it is. To make it better, we delete that. I'm going really fast, so you just pause, go back, learn how to do it. Make the whole thing bigger, easier to do that. Okay, um, layout. Grid lines. You need to turn on your grid lines. You need to turn on both grid lines, like that. Then you need axis titles. So the horizontal axis title. The horizontal axis title is 1 over d squared, which you could call um, the inverse square of distance, if you wanted to spell it out in words, inverse square of distance, it has the units of 1 over meters squared. Okay, so there's your horizontal. Your vertical title, vertical title, there it is there, rotated. Your vertical title is the average light, if I can spell, intensity and it's measured in this thing called lux. Okay, title for the chart, above the chart, you have average light intensity versus um, 1 over d squared. We'll just do that, make it easy. Okay, so now to get the equation, you right click on those, you add the trend line, you make sure it's linear, you display equation, and you've got your equation. I'm going to drag it up here, and I'm going to drag that over here to give some space. You can highlight everything, go to the home button, make your font nice and big. Now, change the Y to the light intensity, change the X to 1 over D squared. So there you go, you'll have your achieved graph ready to print. To get an achieved, you'll have to connect two of these dots and draw a second line. So, now, how to turn this into a merit graph. Here we go, we need the uncertainties. Now, in the instructions, we'd already gave you all these uncertainties. There are these right here, and these right here. How you would have calculated these uncertainties. Going back to that Excel document, I usually put them below, so don't hurt. I'm going to have uncertainty. 1 over d squared, and over here I'm going to have the uncertainty of my average i. Alright, now, first off, the uncertainty of the average i. That's the easier one to do. Here we go. That's equals bracket the maximum of the numbers that made the average, that's these three, close, minus minimum, if I can type, minimum, bracket, the same three numbers that made the average, close that bracket, divide by 2. Now, that's all we have to do because this was an average made of three numbers. It wasn't like in the previous experiment where we had to divide by the number of swings. So that's your average uncertainty. You might want to put what we just did up here. We did max minus min, 
divide by 2. Okay? What we're going to do on this one over here is a little more complex. We have to take the uncertainty of each d, which is that, and we're going to divide by each d. Then we're going to multiply by what we created from that, which is 1 over d squared. And then because we squared it, we have to multiply by the power, which is 2. Okay? So it's a bit strange, but that is how we're going to get these uncertainties down here. So here we go equals 0 0.005 divide by click on that number multiply click on the number that we want and then whoops multiply by 2 and there it is now we want both of these for each of the dots so we just drag both down do we have any more if we get down to the bottom ah yes if we go too far we get this junk here so we don't want those so there we go. Now you can trim these numbers. Again, here's how you trim numbers. Select your numbers. Yeah. Select this column of numbers. Format cells. There it comes. Number, oh, let's say three decimal places. Okay. So, anyway, those are our error bars. Now these numbers here should match exactly with these numbers here and here. And quick scan looks like it's working. Okay, so to put the error bars on, you go back to the layout and you turn error bars on. Doesn't matter which one you turn on because you're going to change them. So if you go for percentage, that's big enough to grab. You select the horizontals, you right click, you format the horizontals, horizontals, you customize that, you specify, and what you want is to click that little thing and go down these, and then click that little thing and scroll down there. Hit OK, hit close. There we go. Now for the verticals, you gotta select the verticals. Oops, gotta grab the vertical air bars. We'll grab this biggest one. There it is. Right click, format, verticals, customize, specify, click there, drag down, click there, drag down. Okay, close. There we go. Well, hasn't changed our equation, but basically this graph should match the graph that we gave you. Okay? In the printing, remember you want to print a landscape graph. So in the printing, you want to make sure that it's a landscape orientation. That's how to make this graph. You would also, again, have to draw a second line on your printout and use the little lines on the graph to work out the gradient of the line that you draw. There you go.